In this interview, I talked to yoga expert Colleen Stebman. Teaching for over 12 years, she's a popular instructor with celebrities like Christy Turlington, Christy Brinkley and Russell Simmons. I was really excited to talk to Colleen. In her early 50s, she looks amazing. The ex-model is still fresh-faced and radiant, so I was eager to discover her secrets to health and happiness. So enjoy the interview. What's your number one insider secret then for improving health and fitness that people can do straight away? When you wake up in the morning, stay in bed for an extra five minutes. I mean, ideally you'd get out of bed and, and roll up a pranayama bolster or, or whatever. But if it's something that they can start doing immediately, just stay in bed, prop up the heart a little bit and listen to your breath and pause after the exhalation. So you inhale, you exhale, and then you suspend. And in that moment, there's no conversation. And that's what yoga is. It's the, the cessation of the conversations, the chatter, the stories in the brain. And when you inhale, exhale, and then you don't hold it for long, but there's this moment after the exhalation where Swami Satyajananda says we're closer to, closest to God. But it, it's this magic, magic moment where there's no pain. And we teach it to um, all sorts of people going through all sorts of, of very painful things in the hospital. And they're using way less morphine. Um, but it also just in your day-to-day -day interactions, it gives you sort of this sense of like, oh, it, it's, it is okay. You know, I don't have to be so caught up in these stories all the time. It gives you relief. And then if you do it, that relief adds up. Um, so it's, uh, for me, it's the most important tool to have in the toolbox is just inhale, exhale, pause. Right. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, talk me through the health benefits of yoga and how it actually works. Well, the whole thing of yoga is bringing you back to your own body's wisdom and coming back into balance. The body wants to be in balance and yoga aids it in doing that. And the way that it does it is many ways. One is it squeezes and releases the muscles and the organs. So it gets rid of all of the, the toxins which are caused by habits. You know, a lot of the, the way that we hold our body and the way that we breathe and the way that we move is all habitual. And in yoga, we train the body to move away from the habit and moving away from the habit is moving into balance. So not only does it ring out um, the muscles. It also keeps the joints fluid in every direction. Um, and then the focus on the breath. I mean, how many illnesses are stress-based? You know, 80%. And then when you learn to breathe properly, just that uh, attunement with the breath redu reduces stress, which reduces illness. I mean, it's really a pretty simple equation. Um, I mean, the number of people that have healed themselves from you know, back pain out here in, in Long Island, we have a high rate of Lyme's disease. And what it does for, for the Lyme's disease, the symptoms of Lyme's disease is amazing. Um, Rodney and I have just started this huge project working in the hospitals uh, where we were training yoga teachers to go into the hospital and work with the symptoms of disease, pain, anxiety, nausea, insomnia, and constipation. And the efficacy of that is outstanding like makes your hair stand up on edge when you see the relief that we were able to give these patients um, so the health benefits are just never-ending and it doesn't matter I mean my 84 year old father is just getting into yoga and it's giving him relief that he's not getting from anything else what should people start in yoga what should they expect um, to face in the first few weeks of starting it and how long will it take before they see any improvement um, I think that they will get the buzz immediately and then they'll spend the rest of their life trying to get that first buzz back. So I think that's what they can expect just to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, you see, you taste, you hear in a way that you've never done before. I mean, it literally flushes out the body. It clears out the body in a way that just leaves you clear um, to receive everything in the most dynamic way. And I think that that beginner's class, that beginner's mind, you get it so much quicker. You don't have the expectation and it's just like, whoa. So I think that they get that hit right away. What do you think are the most common mistakes you see people make when they first start practicing yoga? They try too hard. They, it's still sort of a competition. It's not an inner art form yet. It's sort of this external competition. I have to master that pose and I have to breathe like this and I have to make it look like the cover of Yoga Journal and it's really about flexibility and, and it's not. 
It's not any of that. It's just about a, a beautiful inward journey, finding the, the, the calm within the, within the chaos. Can you pick um, a myth to debunk that that's a common thing that people get wrong about yoga? I think there's still this thing out there that it's a cult or it's a religion and they can't do it because of that. And it's, it's none of that. It's a, it's a philosophy. It's an art form. And it can aid in any religion. Um, it's not a religion itself. I, I know some places it's illegal. And even in the United States, there was one newspaper down in the South that said that we shouldn't do yoga because it clears the mind and makes way for the devil. Like, I think those are the misconceptions. And also that yoga is about, you know, putting your, your leg around your head and becoming a pretzel. It's not, it's not. I mean, Richard Freeman, he's sort of our, our demigod. He, he taught at my studio uh, two weeks ago. And Rob, both Rodney and I are just like hanging on every word he says. I think he's so amazing. But he was saying that the most beautiful backbend he'd ever seen was a 90-year-old man. And it was just like, hmm. It just integrated the whole body flowing in the in a really nice even arc, but it wasn't it wasn't grabbing your heels and you know doing all that crazy contortionism. Are there any uh, resources that you can recommend for people who are starting yoga? What should they be looking for to maybe find uh, a bit more information? Rodney and I have an, an online yoga club. It's called the Gaiam Yoga Club. G A I A M. And you can take class with us every day for 12 weeks. And it's, it's, it's um, progressive. So in, we give you modifications. So you can be a beginner or advanced. A lot of teachers use it for sequencing. They literally take the sequence of that day and go and teach it because it teaches you a lot about alignment and sequencing. And it's one of the things that we're the most proud of. So that's, that's what I would recommend. And then there's always, I mean, you can't not have Iyengar's book, Light on Yoga. When you first started practicing yoga, what was the most important thing you did to make it become a habit? Um, you know, I'm sort of a, an addictive kind of person. And when something makes me feel that good, there's just, you just have to do it. I mean, there's, I, I don't think that it's anything that you need to force yourself to do because I think it just happens. Once you get the, once you start getting the juice, there's no turning back. We do have a tendency to not do what's good for us. I think that when something is really good, oh, I know I should do it, but. And um, I think the idea of a sangha, of a group of people, <clears throat> or at least one person to continually check in, um, to hold yourself accountable and responsible is, is also a, a really good, a really good idea. And there's lots of different types and forms of yoga. Can you describe the form that you actually practice and why it's so special? I started out at Jiva Mukti um, 13, 14 years ago. I got certified there. And um, I'm basically sort of a yoga slut. Like I study whoever, wherever. Um, I follow Richard Freeman around, David Swenson, I adore. Richard Rosen, of course, my husband, Rodney Yee, I've been studying with for years and years at this point. Um, so my teaching is very interdisciplinary. Um, I, it usually comes actually from my own practice, but my own practice comes from the teaching of all these masters that I've been so fortunate to study with. Uh, my own classes consist of, um, I still like to do flow classes, a little bit of vinyasa, but I like to think they're very intelligently sequenced and nobody gets hurt. And I'm also a big fan of, I know that a lot of my teachers don't approve, but I still like to play music in class. I love like you know, Bob Dylan or Melissa Etheridge, you know, not through the whole class, but just to get my point across because there's always some sort of a spiritual teaching involved. And then I pick out a song and a reading to go with the spiritual teaching that I'm trying to emphasize on that day. Tell us the story of how you first discovered yoga. I've been a jock pretty much my whole life. I uh, have five brothers, was brought up in Indiana, a huge basketball, track, um, baseball, just a total jock to stay up with my brothers. And um, came to New York, I've been modeling since 1979. And I started taking you know, step classes and you know any sort of really hardcore, they have this thing called Radu in New York City. It's intense, intense physical. And then I became a boxer. 
and actually started fighting. I got a license and became, you know, professional boxer. And um, my next door neighbor asked me if I wanted to go take a yoga class. And I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding. You know, that's, that's for girls. I'm not... And I was like, all right, whatever. So I went and took the class. And after the class, it was like, I, I have, have a history when I was young of doing a lot of drugs. And um, I've been clean for very many years, 30 years at this point. But I walked out and I was like, I can't believe this is legal. Like, I feel amazing. I just could not believe it. The colors were brighter. I could hear things. I mean, it was just, it was the most surreal thing just from one class. And um, so th there was just no question I was going to, go again. I mean, I kept up all this other, you know, crazy physical stuff. Um, but then in, in 94, I had to have back surgery. They literally carried me out of one of these crazy aerobics classes. And since 94, I've done yoga is really my only form of physical activity in that way. Is there anything that you do now um, that's different to when mm -hmm. you first started practicing? Rodney and I wake up, take the kids to school, come back, light candles on our altar. We sit down and we do pranayama and meditation before anything else in the day. That's because if we don't do it then, it won't happen. Things will get just too crazy and too busy. Um, so even if we don't do asana in a day, we always do pranayama and meditation. And then we'll come downstairs and maybe get something to eat. And then one of us is usually teaching and the other one is usually taking class. Um, and if that's not the case, then we'll do asana here at home. Um, but I think the key for us is to do it first thing in the morning, even if it means going to bed a half an hour earlier or whatever, because it's, it's almost like people that have to take medication in the morning. It's just, you do it. You know, there's just, it's not an, it, you know, you take a shower, you do your, your yoga. Um, it's, it's just so important. What advice would you give to people for getting back on track? It's just not to use it as another way to beat yourself up and to not uh, create this expectation that you have to practice five days a week, an hour and a half a day. Um, consistency is better than like to do 10 minutes a day um, for you know five days rather than do two hours, be sore and not do it for three days. And then, you know, I think that the main piece of advice I would get is a little bit every day, even if you just do a downward facing dog, a triangle pose, um, a, one twist and get your legs up the wall. If it takes, you know, 10 minutes to do that, you will always feel better. Always. There's just no question about it. Because a lot of times it's all or nothing. It doesn't seem worthwhile, but a little bit is better than spurts. Thank you so much for joining me today, Colleen. Thank you. I, I know that you're really busy. Thanks, Thanks Angel. Again. Bye. Bye-bye.